Welcome guys to today's presentation where we're going to talk about the, the management of the patient with COVID-19. So in the previous video we looked at the pathophysiology of uh, the patient with uh, COVID-19. Please, if you haven't watched those videos, please find time that you watch them. So in today's presentation we will cover the investigations as well as the treatment that we need to give to the patient with uh, coronavirus. So as you know that we there are some sometimes these patients uh, they can present with signs and symptoms of flu and mistakenly the doctors start treating like uh, corona virus so we need to carry out some investigations which is going which will confirm to say that the patient has corona virus okay so the first heading that we're going to look at it is the investigations what are some of the investigations that we do in patients with uh, coronavirus or if a patient is presenting with signs and symptoms of coronavirus what are those investigations that are going to confirm that this is really coronavirus infection so the first investigation that you uh, it is history taking okay history taking so under history taking is that you you need to ask the client if they have traveled to a country in where they have uh, if they have traveled to a country which has increased numbers of uh, covid patients okay or covid cases like usa okay then you can also ask the client about uh, if they are presenting with signs and symptoms uh, of coronavirus such as what such as shortness of breath okay coffee fever so that is under the history taking then you can as well um, do a physical examination okay physical examination so under the physical examination what is going to when you're doing a physical examination what are you going to see so um, when you're doing a physical examination is that uh, you are going to see that the patient will actually present with pulmonary edema right the patient is going to present with the pulmonary edema as well as some other breathy sounds all right that is under the physical examination then we can also do a, what uh, a chest x-ray okay a chest x-ray so what is a chest x-ray going to review to you all right so a chest x-ray it is actually going to review um, a fine ground glass okay chest x-ray to review a fine ground glass all right that is how the chest x-ray is going to review it will review the, the, the fine ground glass it will also going to review some curvatures all right so that is an, under the chest x-ray then you can as well if you're not satisfied you can as well do uh, what we are saying um, um, CT scan alright you can as well, as well do the CT scan what is the CT scan going to review the CT scan it is actually if a patient is actually having coronavirus infection the CT scan is going to review uh, consolidation okay this CT scan, it is going to review consolidation, okay, because of uh, the, the neutrophil inside the, inside the alveoli, the, okay, let's just try to draw it here. So we are saying that, uh, let's assume this is the alveoli, all right, you know that there will be neutrophil, uh, fluid, macrophages, so, this thing it is what we are calling as the consolidation so when you do a CT scan it's going to review a consolidation all right then what else will it review a CT scan is actually going to review a, what we are calling as the crazy 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 paving pattern okay CT scan it is also going to review what we are calling as a crazy paving pattern all right that is under the CT scan okay then if you are also not satisfi satisfied you can as well do what we are calling as uh, an ultrasound 
ultrasound scan. So this one, it is going to review uh, plural line thickening. Okay. Plural line thickening. Okay. Plural line thickening. It will also going to review what? Bill lines. Okay. As well as the air, air bronchoglands. Bronchoglands. Okay. So we are saying that when you do an ultrasound, you see that there will be plural line thickening. Um, then there are also some B lines as well as the airway bronchograms. All right. When you do the ultrasound, if the, if you are not satisfied, then the standard the standard confirmatory diagnostic or diagnosis for coronavirus. It is a nasal swab. Okay, this is the confirmatory uh, diagnosis. Okay, you can do the nasal, nasal or mouth swab. All right, nasal or I just say nasal or oral swab. Huh? Mouth swab. It's okay. Nasal or mouth swab. All right. This one you actually, when you collect the nasal swab or mouth swab, you do the test which you are calling. You take it for real chain polymerase chain reaction. Okay? Real chain polymerase chain reaction. This, when you collect the nasal swab, you do this test, it is going to review the virus, the DNA of the virus. All right? The real chain polymerase chain reaction this it is a confirmatory diagnosis for COVID-19 they are using all right then you can as well do some lab investigations some laboratory test all right some laboratory tests like what you can collect the patient's blood when you collect the patient's blood you can get for full blood count okay then under full blood count is that you actually not to say that the patient will have increased um, white blood cell count okay when you collect the patient's blood for full blood count the patient is going to present with increased white blood cell count all right then you find that that uh, you can as well do what we are saying that uh, the liver function test okay the liver function test you will find out that this patient is going to have increased liver enzymes so under lft when you collect blood okay let's just say this same here you collect blood since it's a laboratory test you collect blood for lft lft this means liver function test when you collect blood for liver function test is that what are you going to find in the blood you find that in the blood there will there will be increased uh liver enzymes okay you know the liver enzymes there will be increased liver enzymes st alt all these enzymes are going to be increased so these are some of the investigations that we can do in a patient with the uh, the patient who has come with uh, clinical signs and symptoms of uh, coronavirus. So, but remember that the nasal swab or the oral swab, this is a confirmatory diagnosis and you do the real chain primary chain reaction. All right. So now let us look at some of the treatment that we give to the patient. So what are some of the treatments? So let us uh, bring another point, another heading, sorry. Okay. The treatment. What is the treatment or the drugs that we need to give to this patient? All right. So some of the drugs are under study. Well, some of the drugs have been approved. Um, so remember that in the COVID-19 patient, they actually present with fever. So we need to give an antipyretic to actually subside the fever. 
So the first drug that we need to give, or the drug that we have to give, one of the drugs that we have to give is that we need to give antipyretic. Alright? We need to give antipyretic. Antipyretic such as what? Uh, we can give paracetamol. Paracetamol. We can give paracetamol to do what? To actually subside the fever. So we are giving this to actually relieve or subside the fever. Alright? Then what else? What other drug can we give? We can also give what we are calling is that, uh, an antimalarial drug. Antimalarial, antimalarial drug, and this antimalarial drug that they are actually using as at now in COVID nineteen, it is what we are calling as chloroquine or hydrochloroquine. Okay. Um. So this antimalarial drug, it is what we are calling as hydrochloroquine. All right, hydrochloroquine. So, what is the function of this drug? How is this drug working? So, I'm going to rub here so that I can actually show you how. Okay, I'll just use here. So, this hydrochloroquine, it is an antimalarial drug. So, what actually happens is that remember that we say that uh, in the pathophysiology, we say that uh, let us assume that this is the COVID, the coronavirus. This is the virus with the uh, S with spike proteins on it all right this is the with spike proteins then we also say that uh, we have this one um, which we said it was the um, the pneumocyte type 2 cell all right this pneumocyte type 2 cell it had a receptor all right it had a receptor or it has a receptor this receptor it is what we are calling as the angiotensin converting enzyme all right and this is the ace this is the spike protein and this spike protein we say that it's just acting like a, a, a key that is going to open this door so that this virus can actually get inside all right so what is actually going to happen how is hydrochloroquine works hydrochloroquine it inhibits okay this process by this virus attaching um it actually prevents this virus from entering into this pneumocyte type 2 cell okay hydrochloroquine is that it prevents this virus from entering into the pneumocyte cell all right it prevents this virus from entering into this pneumocyte cell by inhibiting this, all right? By inhibiting the angiotensin converting enzyme because this virus, it has to interact with this for it to actually get inside the pneumocyte type 2 cell. So this hydrochloroquine, it comes here, inhibit this so that this virus cannot get inside, all right? This is where this hydrochloroquine works, okay? So we also have another drug, but this drug, it is actually under study. So the, the other drug that we have, it is an Ebola drug. The drug that was used to fight against Ebola. The one we are calling it, Remdesivir. Right? Remdesivir. Or Remdesivir. I don't know how you call it. Remdesivir. So this remdesivir is that, uh, how does it work? How does this drug work? Remember, this is uh, what we are calling as the pneumocyte type, type 2 cell inside. We say that this was the RNA, the single-stranded RNA, and we had this enzyme. All right. Let's say this is the enzyme. The enzyme is just here, dancing, happy. All right. It's happy. So what actually happens that this single-stranded RNA, it was using this enzyme. This enzyme, it is known as the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So this single-stranded RNA, it was using this 
enzyme, it actually uses this RNA dependent RNA polymerase to actually make new copies of postus single stranded RNA. Okay, this one it uses this enzyme to make new copies of this. So, what actually happens is that this drug, the remdesivir drug, it actually inhibits this enzyme. All right, it inhibits this enzyme. So once this enzyme becomes inhibited, meaning that there will be no formation of single-stranded RNA. So this is how this drug actually works. Okay. So that's how actually remdesivir actually works. Um, so there is also another drug. Okay. There is also another drug that we that they are actually using. This drug it is known as the tocluzumab. All right. The talk lose map talk okay how is uh, how is this drug working talk lose map this drug is that uh, remember that if um, let's try to draw it here the talk lose map if this is the alveoli all right and we had the artery here remember that inside the neutrophil they were coming from here inside this intravascular compartment entering the alveoli and what was happening the neutrophils were releasing what the neutrophils were releasing what uh, damaging uh, uh, damaging chemicals cytokines that were altering the functions of this alveoli all right so you can actually give there, is, there was also some macrophages huh? The macrophage it was releasing uh, interleukin 1, interleukin 2, interleukin 3. So there was some a lot of complication that we are doing. So this tocluzumab, it's actually going to prevent the neutrophil from actually releasing those cytokines that are going to damaging chemicals that are actually going to damage the, the alveolar wall. All right. Then one thing that uh, another type of drug that they are using because the immunity of the patient is going to become impaired. So as a result of that, they were also going to give uh, an antibiotic. They will consider giving an antibiotic. As an antibiotic, this they are not treating the virus. They, they, they are only giving an antibiotic to act as a prophylaxis. And uh, you can give amoxicillin, all right? You can give amoxicillin which is going to cover or metronidazole which is going to act as a prophylaxis all right a metronidazole which is an antibiotic take you can as well giving uh considering giving uh because you know there, there will be inflammation the swelling so you can give the corticosteroid but you have just to be careful because you remember that the, apart from just uh, reducing the swelling the corticosteroid it also further suppress the immunity so you need to give with caution then you can as well considering um these patients especially the patient who are on actually severe they are in severe cases you consider putting them on mechanical ventilation all right mechanical ventilation so um this is basically how you are actually supposed to or the treatment that is actually being given to the uh, covid 19 patients thank you so much for watching please if you haven't subscribed to my channel click on the red subscription button so that you can receive notification whenever i post my new videos you can as well find me on facebook by searching raymond friday more and like my page thank you